Today we're looking at permanent green olive. Sup, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another episode of The Paint Show. And today we're looking at Permanent Green Olive by Schmenka. Now, for the last few episodes of The Paint Show, I covered paints which I love, paints that have been a staple of mine that I really enjoy using. And so I thought it would be nice to balance things out and look at a paint that I use much, much uh, more rarely uh, than the previous ones. And I think it's due to the fact that I usually mix my own greens and when I do use convenience mixtures such as this one, I tend to use uh, a green that I love the way it looks as a, as a single paint from a tube. And I just never really got to like this one. So I think it could be a good chance for me to try it out and maybe see if I can uh, figure out how I would use it. And not necessarily even with a primary palette, but maybe just as a duo color painting. Maybe I'll find a painting that I, a paint that I like to use this one with, and then I'll just do a painting, a complete painting with just these two, just for example. Okay. So who knows? Um, so I think this will be a good uh, episode for me as well. Uh, so what we're going to do in this episode is, first off, we're going to look at this paint's information. We're going to read uh, from the Schmenka brochure. Uh, then what I want to do is show you demo, show you some mixes and, and show you what it looks like. Uh, wet and dry, wet and wet, dry brush, the usual stuff. And then I think we will try and remix it, okay? Because it is possible for us maybe to try and recreate this one. So if you like this particular color, um, then you may want to learn how to mix it. Okay, so let's get started with the Schmenka brochure. Okay, so let's take a look at the Schmenka brochure. Uh, and here's our green, the permanent uh, green olive. So it's composed of two pigments, uh, pigment orange 62 and pigment green 7. So uh, what it says here in the description is light fest alternative to olive green, mixture of two light fest pigments. And I'm going to show you in just a moment uh, the olive green that they're talking about. So uh, PO62 is pigment orange uh, 62, that's benzimidazolone um, orange, and then we have PG7, which is uh, thalo cyanine green, okay, so thalo green. Uh, now, these two create a more permanent mixture than the one I'm going to show you now, which is the, uh, I guess, the original uh, olive green by Schmincke. Uh and here we have it, olive green, right here. So, you can see for this one, the light fastness is two out of five stars, which, which is not so good. And it's composed of uh, pigment blue 15, which is phthalo blue, and PG8, which is uh, metal complex. I saw a different name for it there, uh, iron something complex. Uh, but in any case, this one, from what I saw on handprint, is used in uh, Hooker's Green by M. Graham, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So this one is much less uh, permanent, as you can see. Uh, so the second mixture, and, and take a look at what it looks like, and hopefully the colors go through well uh, in the camera, and you can see it here. So I would admit that the other one looks a little more to my to my taste, just the way it looks, uh, but this one is a more permanent version, so I guess that's uh, better. So let's look at some other things. This one is a series two. Uh, it is four out of uh, five light fastness, which is good light fastness. Uh, it's one of their new uh, pigments, if I'm not mistaken. Well, relatively new, newer, I guess. Um, or not, you know what, I may be mistaken. Um, in any case, it is semi-opaque uh, semi and semi-staining. Um, and this is it in terms of uh, the information we've got here. It is non-granulating. Um, so what I think we're going to do now is uh, change some things around here. And uh, so what I think... So what I think we'll do now uh, is let me arrange some stuff and we can start demoing this. Okay, so I first want to show you what this green looks like uh, on the palette. So here it is. I didn't use a lot of it, as you can see. Um, and this is basically what you get. It re-wets pretty easily. Um, I don't even remember how dark it can get. So this is exactly the type of thing uh, we're going to try and do now and just test it out. Uh, so let's start here. Let me rearrange the camera. Okay, so let's start with a very uh, light wash just to see what it uh, looks like. So as you can see, I don't know why, but this to me, and I heard a lot of people say they have, uh, they really love this paint. For me, I just don't like really the way it looks, but maybe it does take some time of getting used to, maybe I should use it more uh, to get me more used to it, because it's just on my palette and I barely uh, touch it. But anyway, it can get pretty dark, which I like. Uh, I find that to be very useful. Uh, I did use it in some paintings as a... Um, 
variance green, let's say. So I would just uh, paint with that, uh, and then and then change the mixture using yellows and blues. Uh, but this was kind of the base for that. Um, I do have to say when I look at it, the richer, darker part uh, does look pretty good. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, let's take a look at what uh, it looks like wet and wet. Then we're gonna also try out some dry brush. So I'm just thoroughly <laughs> washing uh, the brush now and I'm just gonna put some uh, water here to begin with. And we're gonna see what it looks like. So I'll start again light, as I always do. Just dab some some of it into the already wet area. And we're gonna see how it behaves. Now I'm adding here, let me show you. I'm just adding a bit more of the green to the mixture and then I continue mixing. So let's do that. And I'm gonna add a bit more. Uh, I see a lot of people that just get started with watercolor and they make the mistake of not mixing enough um, enough paint and also not mixing enough wet consistency uh, and then their first wash dries very easily so you can see here I mixed quite a lot even though I'm just demoing uh, and showing you what this looks like it's just a habit um, so anyway yeah. I'm putting some darker paints this is because it's something I struggled with in the past uh, I wouldn't mix enough paint and now uh, maybe in the last six months or so I started getting this uh, under control so anyway we're gonna let this dry for a while and I'm just going to try out some dry strokes here and see what it looks like. So I'm going to have to dip in a lot of paint and then dry it uh, on the paper. And again, it's a bit hard to get a texture. Oh, you could barely see. So let me do it again. Uh, it's a bit hard to get a texture uh, with this kind of sketchbook, uh, but we'll do what we can. Uh, it's sometimes a challenge when painting trees and stuff like that. Uh, it's a bit hard to get uh, the texture for the edges maybe of the trees. Um, so sometimes what I do is really use the side of the brush. Instead of using it like this, I really move it to the side. Uh, and that tends to help. Uh, maybe even using close to the base of the, of the brush itself. So maybe use this part. Not this part, but this part. Really close to the base. Uh, that tends to help as well. Uh, so in any case, what I want to do now is just try a few mixes. And I'm going to do that very freely. Uh, I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on myself because I'm learning what works with this one. So if I take a bit of the uh, green, and let me hold the palette right here, just to make it easier for myself. So if I take a bit of the green, and the first thing I wanna try it with is maybe yellow ochre. Uh, and the reason why is because uh, the phthalo green worked really well with it, and uh, it surprised me a lot, and, and now I find that it does work with many colors I wouldn't have imagined, okay? So I'm just gonna try and let these two mix for a bit uh, on the paper. Uh, maybe I'm gonna do some of that mixing also on the palette. So I'm gonna take some of the pure uh, uh, yellow ochre. Hopefully you can see this. And uh, I'm gonna mix it here. And it is a very nice color, I guess. Uh, a more yellow olive kind of. So, so this could be, uh, I wonder how this compares uh, to the the olive green, the non-permanent version. I wonder if they're close. Uh, my only complaint with yellow ochre uh, of the of Schmincke is that it doesn't get as dark as I'd like it to be. Uh, so it tends to lighten up the whole uh, mixture, which is something that I don't always want. Uh, so I think, well, that's enough for that. Maybe let's try some uh, quinacridone rose or even magenta uh, and see how these work together. So I'm gonna take again a bit of green. Uh, and I do have both here on the palette, so let's try the um, Quinacridone Magenta or Magenta. I don't even remember what this one is called, but I don't use this one as often. It's pretty similar to the Quinacridone uh, Violet, but it's a bit different. So yeah, it's a bit more uh, towards the purple, I guess. Uh, let's try, I didn't like this one as much, so let's try maybe with the Quinacridone Violet right here. It's this one. I reviewed this one uh, on the previous episode, I believe. So I'm going to maybe allow these two to mix a bit on the paper. And then I'm going to try and mix them on the palette. And I'm sure there's tons of different colors uh, I can try together. Let's see what this looks like on the palette. As I expected, they should really neutralize each other. Um, so yeah, so we get a very... Ooh, that's... a 
close to perfect gray, so this is interesting. Uh, I may consider using that actually as a gray. Um, though I find this to be sometimes boring, uh, but it is useful at times, so depending on the, on the palette you're gonna use, I guess. So here's a darker variant of that. Um, so yeah, this is. I don't. I don't even know honestly what kind of colors to try with it. Uh, I think I'm gonna take the whole next page and just play around with it and see what I can produce, uh, kind of off camera because I am curious. Uh, if you have any recommendations, let me know in the description box. Uh, I know you always have some useful ones. Uh, maybe for uh, blues to try with it, or or yellows, or even reds, and just to see what I get. Uh, next up, I want us to try and remix this one. So it could be a bit of a challenge. Uh, now what I will have to create is that uh, pigment orange uh, and then mix it together with the phthalo green. So for the pigment orange, uh, I will, I would like to use kind of a, I don't even know, we're just gonna try it out and see what happens. Uh, I'm just gonna grab some of that yellow here. And this is really just pure experimentation. I doubt that we'll, <laughs> we'll get close to what I want, but we can try. So, and then I'm gonna grab some of the red here. And I'm gonna clean these two so they're a bit less contaminated. And I think this actually comes close to the orange uh, that's in use here. So, maybe a bit more of the yellow. No, I think a bit more of the red. So with this, in theory, I'm supposed to mix this one with, um, with the phthalo green. So I guess we'll just uh, give it a try. Uh, so I've got the orange and now I'm gonna grab some of the phthalo uh, green here and we're gonna mix it and see what we get. Probably, um, let's let's see what it looks like for now. So we get something that's quite different, as you can see. And I'm gonna try and up the consistency of the, of the green because that seems to be what this calls for. And we do get something a little uh, more similar here. So if I do that, uh, it is pretty close. Uh, so I think it's all just a matter of consistencies, really. Um, and I don't know if I'll get really close, maybe a bit more of the red, but you have to be really careful with the red because it's super dominant. You can just pick up a little too much and it will completely overpower the mixture. Uh, but anyway, the red I'm using and the, and, the, and the yellow I'm using, sorry, I forgot. Uh, yeah, so uh, these ones that I'm using are speculation only, uh, and so you won't get probably the exact same result. What I'm trying to do now is darken it uh, up a little bit, so maybe I'll add a bit more green to it. I like this kind of raw, rough experimentation of just picking up many paints and seeing what we can create. Um, so just a bit more green, and I think we'll get something close. So this is a bit too orange still, so I'm going to pick up a lot more green, let it mix. And now we get something a little closer, so just a little more green, and there we go, a darker version. Um, so as you can see, it's not that difficult to mix this kind of green. It's actually very similar to the pure uh, phthalo green. Let me show you. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit and then use it purely so you can see. Well, it's not that similar. It is pretty different, but um, yeah, it is different, really different. So in any case, uh, this is how you mix this, and it just goes to show you that you can uh, many times mix colors, even if you think maybe it'll be a little complicated. Uh, I literally now just improvised it and I got the same mix. So let me zoom out a bit and show you everything together. So here we go, here's everything we did. Um, and again, looking at this, it's not my favorite color to, to mess around with. Um, I would like to see this color in a painting that I really love and that'll probably make me change my mind about it. Uh, but until then, I will give it a shot and I will try to experiment. Uh, by the way, if you look at the wet and wet results, it's interesting. Uh, it does have this uh, splitting pattern, but you see it splits into multiple hairs or tooths. So that's uh, very interesting. Uh, you can see that here and also a bit here where I reintroduced some darker pigment to the wet area. Um, so in any case, uh, this is it. I really hope you enjoyed this quick review. Um, and let's wrap up this episode. 
So this is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Paint Show and maybe this will encourage me to give this one uh, a try as you saw with the different mixes. I don't know, maybe I'll find something that works for me uh, and if so, I'll be more than happy to use this. Uh, alternatively, I can just use it as an additional green. So many scenes require you to use multiple types of greens and this could be just one of them and it sometimes can work within the, the same color scheme if you do it right, which is something I do want to improve on. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will put links to everything in the description box below. Also, if you haven't noticed, I started putting cards. So there should be a card here uh, from time to time saying, uh, check out this other video. So I'll sometimes include polls there uh, just to ask you questions and maybe see if I can get feedback that way. Okay, so I will also link to my podcast, uh, to my Patreon page, to my Instagram and everywhere else. Uh, thank you so much. If you still haven't subscribed, don't forget to do so because I have many other episodes of The Paint Show and also tons of other videos and painting processes and, and painting critiques and reviews and all sorts of stuff. Okay, so thank you so much and I will see you again in another episode of The Paint Show and in another vid real soon. Thank you.